So in this demo, I will show you how you can use OpenShift Toolkit extension to develop Java application direct develop and debug Java application direct on the OpenShift cluster or any Kubernetes cluster would matter. So let me first get the source code for my application. So I'll be using this simple application that I have prepared. So this is going to be so we can see that this application already has a dev file. So this is a scenario where uh, I may be joining the team that's already, already using the uh, this extension and or already using any other project that uses the files. So I will clone the repository here. Open. Uh, yeah, we have our source code. Let me just switch a branch because you know, I have my default in a different branch. Uh, let's switch to this. So we have our source code. It, this is just like simple application. Um, I will, we will use, for example, this hello one point. So <clears throat> here I have my application. I can edit it. I can run it locally if I would want to. But I can also use OpenShift Toolkit here to uh, to develop it directly on the cluster without needing to run the lo application locally. So as a first step, let me log into the cluster because I'm currently not logged in. So here I have my OpenShift instance. I'm actually using the uh, Red Hat OpenShift Dev Sandbox. That's for free to try. So I can do copy login command. I will need this one. So let me log in. Uh, oh, this is wrong. Copy this one. This correct. And we want to use token, and we will copy this token. And now, in a few seconds, we can see that we are connected to the cluster, and here we see the stuff that we are that uh, on the cluster. There is just one project that's currently empty, and because I've opened the uh, project that already uses a dev file, uh, here I can see one component. This is my local component. It's it's actually this application. So I can do just start dev. This is going to use audio to run uh, the dev file on the cluster. Uh, run what it around the file means that it will use the information from the dev file to create the containers, then it will sync the source code into the container and run and uh, build and run the application. So while this is going on, we can look at how the file looks like. So this is the file for the Spring Boot project, simple Spring Boot project. So we can see that it's using this image. And here we have the contain, uh, commands that are defined how to run and build the application. So we can see that here is the command that will be used to build the application. And this will be the command to run the application. And this will be the command to use to run the application in the debug mode with debug enabled. So now in the audio output, we can see that our application is already running. So we can go to this port on the local host, and we should see our application. 
here it is. I'll go to hello endpoint. This is our hello world application. Uh, audio actually sets up the call forwarding to the localhost between localhost and the cluster. So it means that our localhost port 40001 uh, is forwarded to the container to, to port 8080. So while we have this running, we can go to our hello controller and let's do some changes. So I can actually add a new string here called message. We will do hello world yellow and we will do message here. I just hit save. And now in the terminal output here in the bottom, we will see that the audio notices the changes and it will sync the source code to the cluster and start and then start our application. Uh, so we should see the changes. Go back and do I hit refresh and we can see a message change from, from variable. But we can do more with this. We can also try to debug stuff. So I will go back into the open factor and I will do debug here. This will start a debugger. It automatically configures the uh, VS Code debugger for Java and connects to our application running on the cluster. So now it's running. I will put the breakpoint here, break here before the message. Here I will do. I will refresh it again. At this point, it's not finishing because it stopped on the breakpoint. And now I can actually check the bug. Here you can see that it's going to work. I run the bug. I will change the, the value of the variable to hello low from the bug. And I can assume application. If we go back here, you can see that it's changed hello from the bug. I can refresh it again. So I can pause here. This time I will just resume the work and we see hello world from the so this is how this is the stuff that you can do.